So yes, welcome to beautiful Germany. Now I'm here literally 200 yards away from the Nürburgring Nordschleife. It's just over there. That's the, the main straight actually. And there is a track day on today. So if you hear any noises in the background, any incredible machinery, that's what it is. There's some amazing cars going around that track day today. Anyway, why am I doing a film with a 1M? Why am I here? So me and Joe and Pat from the podcast are on a bit of a Euro road trip. We've come over here to the ring to do a podcast with Misha, which we filmed just a couple of days ago, but we brought with us an M2 and a 1M. And the reason for bringing the 1M is that on Saturday, there was a huge meeting of 1Ms from all over Europe. In fact, the furthest car came from Dubai. There were some 80 1Ms all gathered at the Nürburgring. And we brought this car along and it was delivered to my house the day before we left for the road trip. And I had the pleasure of driving this car all the way here. And I never really had, see, there's those really beautiful sounding race cars again. I never really had any plans to do a film or review this car. But to be honest, I've fallen in love with it so much that I just had to make a film and I had to share my thoughts and impressions of this car, having never driven one before. I've always quite liked them to look at, but never been lucky enough to get behind the wheel. Now, the proper name for this is this is a BMW 1 Series M Coupe. But most people just refer to it as the 1M. Arguably, it's the predecessor to the modern day M2. It's a three liter straight six manual gearbox rear wheel drive M car in a very small package. It has all of the ingredients for the ultimate driver's car. But before we take it driving, let's just talk a little bit about the styling and I'll walk you around the car a little bit, but there are some incredible roads around here. Sadly, this is a BMW car from the BMW Heritage Fleet and guess what? They wouldn't let me take it around the ring, but there are some amazing roads in the vicinity. So before we go driving, let's talk a little bit more about the car and let's just start with the styling. So you could argue that the 1M is almost becoming a modern classic. It was built in 2011 so it is getting on in years and it was a bit of a parts bin special really but it's just such a pretty little car whether you look at it statically I've just been filming here someone just parked the car over there and come and taken some photographs of it when you see it moving on the road it's just got this presence and you start off at the front and I know modern day BMWs certainly in the last few years have had a lot of criticism for the size of their grills getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Look at these little kidney grills. They're just perfectly proportioned. And then you come around here and for me it's the wings. It's this, this the way the wing comes out here and it just gives the car a squat stance. The dish on the wheels is just beautiful. It's such a pretty car from the front. And, and for me that's where you start to... I'd never really... I wouldn't say um, lusted after one before, or even just use the word wanted one before. But when it was parked up at my house and I arrived home last week from a trip and I thought, oh, look, that's a pretty car. And then you drive it and we've done lots of filming with it and it really is growing on me. And then you get around the back and the back's lovely. Now, I know I'm doing a lot of squatting down by the car, but I just want to kind of get you as close as I can because it's, its dimensions are so perfect. But the rear view, I guess there's an argument, this boot is maybe a little bit awkward, but it's those wide hips, the wheels that stick out and the lovely arches. You've got four exhausts coming out the back. It, it just has this purposeful look. And when it's on chat, when you're, when you're on throttle, this thing sounds amazing. Really, really amazing. So let's have a chat about what's under the bonnet and have a think about performance and so on, because it's, it's a proper little pocket rocket, this car. Now, when the 1M came out, there were a few BMW fanboys that really didn't think it was a proper M car because it didn't have an S designated engine. It was an N designated engine, but it's still a pretty special motor. That's a three litre straight six twin turbo, produces 335 BHP and all 1Ms were rear wheel drive six-speed manual transmission and they weighed five kilos under 1500 kilos so lightweight 
high power, lots of performance. And back in the day, well, back in the day, that was a lot. I mean, this car would do 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, which for a manual car is quick and difficult to achieve. And I think we do get, I don't know, spoilt by the power and performance of modern day cars. But this in 2011, that was, they were big, big numbers. But for me, it's the character of this engine. It's really talky, it revs very freely, it sounds fantastic. And this car's completely stock, um, and it still sounds amazing, whether you're inside the car or outside the car. It's, it's a stunning, stunning thing. So yeah, very, very special power plant. Very, very special car. The interior is, it's a bit back to basics. You kind of forget the modern day cars, big touch screens, loads of phone integration and all that kind of stuff. It's just got buttons everywhere. It's got beautiful trim, Alcantara trim here on the top of the instrument binnacle, on the door, pulls the door cards. The seating position is, is lovely. It's, it's a really small and compact car. You're not sat too low down, you are a little bit up, especially when I kind of jump out of this and get into the M2. Watch my M2 review when that hits the channel to kind of, I'll talk about the differences. But the, the, the position for the driver is fantastic. The gearbox is a lovely change. Um, you have to be quite, quite direct with your um, clutch inputs and just make sure you, you get through the gears. Now, interestingly, there's a little plaque here that says one of 450. Um, in the UK, right-hand drive models, they only ever made 450 of these. Now, they were, when they were new, they were £40,000. And, and they kind of held their money really, really well. And I think you'd probably be looking at around about that kind of money for a good one today. They proved a really, really good investment. So let's take it out on the road. Um, in terms of driving, it's quite simple from a drive mode perspective. There's a, an M button on the steering wheel that's put into a sport mode. That's not configurable. There's no configuration in the suspension. And then I've got a little button on here that will, um, it's got two, uh, two levels, if you like. First level backs the traction control off a little bit and puts it in what's called MDM mode. Or if I hold that button down, it takes all the traction control off completely. And then there is an overboost function as well to give you a little bit more power when you're in the M mode button. But but apart from that, it's, it's really straightforward. I'm not going to do any of the a review of any of the tech because it's all a bit old school. Now, it does have satellite navigation. You can Bluetooth your phone, but it doesn't have things like Apple CarPlay and so on. But then that's not what this car's about. But yeah, it's an absolutely mega thing to drive. So let's go and find some nice German roads. Now I've spent quite a lot of time behind the wheel of this car over the last few days. I drove it all the way out here to Germany from the UK and it's lovely <laughs> and there's no denying it. It's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. You sat quite high up, especially compared with the M2 I've been driving while I'm out here as well. And when you just have it in normal mode, it just sounds nice. It's got a really nice tone. It's got a really nice feel to the steering, but what you really want to do is push this little M button on the steering wheel, changes the throttle map mapping, puts it into sport mode, and then, then you can really start to tap in to this lovely straight six. It's very talky. You've got all you need really in second and third gear. It's got a lovely feel through the corners, then when you come out, for a car that was built in 2011, it's plenty rapid enough, plenty rapid enough. Brakes are pretty good as well, down a gear, the gearbox is a nice feeling and then it just sounds mega this car. It's old school. In here, tech-wise, well, there isn't any really. It's got sat-nav and a radio and it's got a eight disc CD auto changer. Remember those? But you don't care about any of that. Because the more you drive the car, the more you start to get in tune with it, the more confident you get in it. Now, at the moment, I'm in M mode or sport mode but there are two levels of traction control that I mentioned before. You've got the little button on the top. If you push it just the once, what that does is it 
puts it into MDM mode and just backs the traction control off a little bit. Now it's a nice dry day today, so it's no great shakes. But when it's damp, you have to be a bit careful of that. You almost get the feeling driving this car that you've bought it home, that it was designed to be driven on roads like this by the geniuses at BMW M. Because it just sits there and... Just listen to that! It's got a lovely feel to the steering. I'm gonna put it to second coming around here on the downhill quite tight this it sort of tightens up and then you can get on the power punch your way out it's got a limited slip diff just to help you get that power into the tarmac now it does roll a little bit and again I keep comparing this to the M2 that we've been driving while we're out here it's got a bit of body roll but actually I don't mind that at all I quite like a bit of dip into a corner does deal with the bumps quite well. <laughs> you just, it's just a delicious car. Traction light just blinking on a little bit there, just helping me out. trip and Joe mentioned about the 1M and bringing it out here to the 1M meet. It didn't really resonate with me. It didn't really make me go, ooh. But this car has got under my skin like no other car or certainly not a car I've driven for a long time. I absolutely love it. It's just got so much character. That's what this car has. It's a driver's car. You need skill to really get the most out of it. It's rear wheel drive in damp conditions. It'll bite you. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Even doing some filming yesterday, it was sort of dry, damp conditions. Get on the throttle coming out of a corner a bit early, especially if you've got the traction backed off, you're gonna get a little bit of action at the back of the car. And if you're an advanced driver, it's got ample scope for you to play with but when you're on beautiful roads like this and you've got that amazing twin turbo three litre straight six in front of you 335 horsepower God, i mean just look traction's just blinking there coming out of that corner and it just asks you to get on it to drive it harder to go for it more it's just a great thing, an absolutely brilliant, brilliant thing. And honestly, I could drive it around these German roads all day and all night. So let's just enjoy this one. You don't really need much more than fourth down a road like this. But I did get the chance to max it on a bit of German Autobahn. Technically, this car is limited to 155 miles an hour. So how did I get on? Huh? 
But when you bring a car like this to Germany, it makes you realise why cars are allowed to go that fast because you can do it legally here. It's brilliant. It's an amazing country because they've got incredible roads on this. Look how lovely the balance is through that corner there. Just sticking there, I'm going to drop it down into fourth just to get a little bit more torque and a bit more in the power band coming out of this corner. Boom, there she goes. <laughs> The 450 people in the UK, well, I guess 449, because I'm in one of them and it's owned by BMW, that have got one of these, very jealous. Very, very jealous. in the comments below guys what do you think of the 1M do you think it would give you look at this road a moronic face like I've got right now a big gurning smile I reckon it would I reckon this thing would put a smile on anybody's face uh, boo we're into the town look So, if you haven't been to Germany before to come and have a bit of a driving holiday, what's wrong with you? You need to come to Germany because it's amazing. Absolutely amazing place. The roads are great. The food's good. The beer's good. The people are lovely. And if you're around the kind of Nürburgring area, baby <laughs> you can do that anyway I'm gonna calm down oh, beautiful old 911 target there I'm gonna calm down and go back and find find the boys get myself a coffee I think but guys I hope you enjoyed that if you did give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come and I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe.